Hello, I am Philip Schmidt from PD Verlag, editor, and I am interviewing our new designer, Daniel Newman, for of the game Watch that we want to release next year. Um, so, let me bring up my questions for you, Daniel. How are you, yeah. first of all? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Yes, uh, it's, it's Saturday evening and it's, um, yeah. It's, uh, it has been a long week. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's uh, dive right into the questions. Um, so this one is, uh, what is your very first memory of board games? I was actually just thinking about that this morning. Uh, my very <laughs> first memory was uh, like getting out of bed and going into the kitchen to find my parents playing Trivial Pursuit. Okay, cool. When I was maybe four or five years old. Yeah, great. really wanting to play Chivo Pursuit with them, uh, <laughs> and sitting on my dad's lap and trying to guess the answers to the questions, and occasionally getting them to the surprise of, of their adult friends as well. Okay, uh, cool. That was my very first board game. <laughs> so, and and we didn't talk about these questions. So it it no. was it was a I question just that. I thinking about it this morning. It kind of <laughs> great, I great. I must have known. I was reading your mind. Yeah, I I thought so. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, and this is uh, also a very specific question. Um, do you have a favorite board game that was published before the new millennium, so before the year 2000? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> before 2000? Settlers was released before. <laughs> you got to tell me that ahead of time. That's a thinker. <laughs> Well, you can al already think about the follow-up question. That is, uh, yeah. what's, what's your favorite game of the years 2000 to 2010? Uh, I think, oh, God. You're, you're <laughs> dropping these crazy bombs on me. Now. I have to look. I don't remember when stuff is. Cause the thing is, like, I got into games in, like, early 2000s. So do you remem remember playing games? When things are necessarily published, you know. Yes. But uh, just remembering we playing. Power grid. We say Power Grid is probably my favorite. Yeah. Okay. 2000, that one for sure. Um, before that, yeah, what was. I would have to check. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, there's no. a game called Billabong that was. Uh, it is an abstract game uh, about kangaroos jumping around a pond and okay. they have to like, hop over each other. I think that was done pretty early. <laughs> actually, I can look up that. That would, that would probably be my, my favorite of that. <laughs> of that so, era. Game Let's just look it up real quick. You can ask me another question while I'm looking it up. <laughs> oh, okay. I so tell you when Bill was done. Mm. 1992. So that would work, right? Well, yeah, that's that's then a great so, answer. So Billabong for the 90s, and then Power Grid for 2000s. <laughs> okay, and then no no crazy stuff like Monopoly or. Uh, I mean, I don't. Uh, or, um, I don't know, like the, the, the 80s had also some, I don't know, Hero Quest or, or Talisman would be. I remember playing Hero Quest. I enjoyed Hero Quest at the time. I don't know that I have any fondness for any of those anymore. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was a game. Was one thing I really liked, I don't know if you have these in Germany, but uh, in the 90s, there were these cassette tape games. They were like the size of a cassette tape. And you would flip it out, and it was a little plastic, a little board would flip out. And then you'd have little magnet pieces, like pawns, okay. and you could play a board game, and it was like you know this big. Okay. It up and fit yeah, it yeah. Into, like, and then the side, like, set tape. yeah. I was really into those. I like those a lot. To, to go uh, games. <laughs> I think they were called flipsters. Okay. Like Good. Um, those were really cool. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, thinky question. Okay. So, uh, it is two-parted. Yeah. The first question is, what is your favorite movie genre, and mm -hmm. then. Does it translate well into board games? Oh, interesting. And when can we expect your first board game on that topic? <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I've been watching, this summer I watched a lot of horror movies. Um, but like, there's this, I don't really necessarily like slasher movies. Um, I like more kind of psychological horror movies. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I think, I don't know that I'm going to design a game in that genre necessarily, but I think it does kind of influence yeah. things I'm, <laughs> I'm into, like I've done Dead Man's Cabals about necromancers, and I've got a couple other games that revolve around like burial and death and stuff. So there's probably nuggets of it in yeah. my designs, but I don't know that I. I feel like horror is a hard thing 
to do in games because so much of it is visceral and board games are very kind of analytical and like you're using your brain and not your emotions. Mm. Uh, so I think there there've been a couple of games that that get close to giving you that feeling of, of almost being scared while you're playing, but I think it's tough. But, yeah. Something like um, Nyctophobia, okay. uh, where all everybody who's playing are wearing dark glasses except okay. for the, the player of this the monster. They yeah. see everybody. Yeah. I can see that. I have not played it myself, but I, you know I, I know a bunch of people who have, and I can see that feeling of dread that you get while watching a horror movie. That but can it's, kind of come through. it's because it's, you're blindfolded, and you can't. See yeah, yeah, yeah. And if uh, you don't I trust your fans, that could be. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think it's. I think horror is a hard thing to do with board games uh, to get the same feeling you would get from a movie. Okay, great, great answer. And um, so, uh, yeah, and then um, uh, a classic question for game designers: uh, When are you most inventive? And so, when do the apples fall on your head for for being you inventive? Mean like, so it used to be that I would get. Most of my ideas, like in the fall, um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like, you know, when we go to school as kids, it starts in the fall and ends in the spring and you have the summer off, right? And I feel like even through college and after, my creativity kind of happens in that same pattern. Mm -hmm. So like okay. I, I take the summer off. I usually don't do any design or anything in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then I get a wave of creativity in like the fall. And then I, I work on it through the winter and then I'm pitching then, in the spring and, and then I uh, take a break because I'm kind of burned out. Yeah. Um, it was a little different this year with the pandemic happening. Yeah. I, I kind of stopped Dude. earlier and I haven't really picked it up again. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm also working on this publishing stuff now. Yeah. And I've got yeah. games that are done that I want to get out. So I'm less focused on like on creating the, new. On the uh, creative part in, in that sense. In the game design sense, you're not Yeah, so as it's focused. like game design brain is kind of taken <laughs> uh, and I'm working more on like the, the production and thinking about how I'm going to get my other games out. So you and and then you once told me that you were uh, thinking about game designs uh, uh, during the shower. What is yeah, that still used, happening? That is when it? I was first designing. <laughs> I would get these waves of uh, uh, inspiration yeah. while I'm in the shower or when I'm driving in the car. <laughs> Any time that I'm alone okay, so and I can't do anything else. Yeah. My so your mind. Just, It lets go, you know, and you're not focused on other stuff, and then the ideas come. Uh, that I, I, after the first couple of years, that stopped happening. I got all, okay. of, my, all of my big ideas out. Those are out, and I get one a year now, maybe if I'm lucky. So, uh, okay. I've, been at, I've been at it for about five or six years. I think. Hmm. Uh, so, okay, so, cool. So I. I, I apparently, my next question is very, very in that same area. So. Um, Do you dream of board games or of uh, events that you or that you play the game, and then you do you, you dream of the strategies you used, or or is it simply a daytime thing? <laughs> I don't. I don't think I have. I don't remember ever. Again, in that first couple of years, I would occasionally have a dream, and it's usually as I'm waking up, my brain would send me a, like, oh, <laughs> this is how this should work, or as I'm falling asleep, I've had that happen before too. Yeah. Like again, like when your brain just kind of lets go of all the things that are bothering you throughout the day. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've ever actually had a dream about a game or playing a game. Video games, I've definitely had. Yeah. Video games, are, you know, if, if they I are more, play a game like for four hours before going yeah. to bed, then I'll, I'll dream about it. Yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever had that happen. I know that from playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> it yeah, oh, it yeah. simply stays in your head. It does. Or, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in the World of Warcraft for a while. Um, and that, that definitely happened. But no, I don't think I have that happened before games. I know um, I know other people who have, like Jason Dinger. Um, he turns <laughs> okay. said that he has had he's woken up, you know, in, in a dream he designed a board game and he like had to design it after And it was ready to back. to being pitched. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. He just it was, it was ready, it was ready to go. <laughs> no, I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't okay, cool. So um, yeah, let's let's move on to your designs. Um, up sure. until now, do you have a favorite one or one that you would like to feature in some way? Um, I mean, of my published designs, I think I'm probably the most proud of Dead Man's Cabal. That was the game that I was trying to make for the first two or three years. Like I, it, I, did, yeah. I, I had to grow as a designer in order to make that game, right? Um, mm. And The production, I think, is great. Yeah, I was really pleased with what the publisher did with it. Uh, so that one is, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one. 
uh, Ahead in the Clouds as my first game. Uh, I'm still pretty proud of. Uh, I think that came out really well. And then I'm really looking forward to the stuff that I have. I have potentially three games coming out next year, um, one of which you know is Watch with yes. you. Um, and then Astro Overlay Relay uh, with Parallel Games, which is, I think, probably my best design I've done. Uh, it's kind Besides of Besides Watch. <laughs> Besides Watch, of course. <laughs> uh, but... Um, no, Astro Lab I'm really excited about. Uh, and then I have a trick-taking game coming out with the okay, company. Cool. Um, which I don't think they've announced it yet, so I probably shouldn't say. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, tomorrow, next year could be, could be pretty, pretty Okay, exciting. cool. So yeah, then let's move on to watch. So um, could you talk a bit about your inspiration for the game or how it came about in the, in the early design? Sure. Um, I think that one actually did start as a shower thought. <laughs> okay, <thinking> cool. <laughs> The Panopticon, which is this, um, it's a prison idea where the guard is in the center of a building and all of the prisoner cells are on the outside. And at any time, the guard can be looking at any of the cells. Mm -hmm. uh, it's psychologically, it, it makes everybody have to be on their best behavior, I guess, because mm -hmm. they could be watched at any time. But I didn't really want to make a game about prison. That didn't sound no, that's... very fun. Yeah. Um, so then I was thinking about other uh, other ways I could use that, that kind of idea of being watched and having that influence what decisions you're making. Uh, and it started out as a as an asymmetric game, so one player was always the foreman and the other oh, players okay. were, were you know, working in the factory, but it didn't quite feel right, and I wound up making that, uh, that foreman position kind of variable. Mm -hmm. uh, so anybody could jump into that spot. And then everything it kind of built up around that, um, that idea, and then uh, I was really into uh, Atala Serda's games when I was designing it. I still am but we were playing more of them at the time. Um, and I thought the action selection of Kong uh was really cool, uh, and I kind of adapted that, uh, something mm -hmm. similar to that uh, for Watch. And then it all just kind of fell into place after that. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, try to bring up the, uh, a picture of the board. Oh. Um, yes, so we can see the round board, with the, and we see the munition crates and, and all of that. So. Um, do you already see it on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, could, would you mind yeah, talking a bit about it? Sure. So, um, the board is divided up into kind of four uh, sectors, I guess, or rooms, with um, two spaces, uh, action spaces in each one. Um, so you've got uh, you've got the uh, the warehouse, which mm. is where you can produce gears and. Uh, or, Sorry, I just... No, the like, warehouse is, down, is upgrades. Why. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> so it's um, um, the loading yeah, so docks. The loading docks is where you... Mm, exactly. Yep, the loading docks is where you can uh, smuggle out uh, munitions crates or um, sell your gears, which is the main way you can get some money. You've got the machine shop for producing the gears, either um, normal production or uh, you can do a little extra. Um, then you've got the warehouse. You can upgrade your, um, your personal... Uh, it basically upgrades every action on the board, depending on uh, how you choose to do it. Yeah. Uh, or you can just kind of gain some gears and money, and then you've got the... Um, the performance office. Performance office, office. yeah. Uh, where you can look through old files to try to... There's a set collection, and also gives you bonus abilities, as well as a space where you can kind of spy on the next round. Mm. Um, and try to catch other players uh, being naughty. Uh, and then they <laughs> yeah. have to pay you a bribe, or they have to... Yeah, they pay you a bribe, and if they can't afford it, they have to take Exactly. Um, exactly. Okay. So, yeah. So and and the round boards that's that's kind of your thing. You you told me once. Yeah, I've done the round board in a lot of games. I don't know what it is. I'm just drawn to it. Dead Man's Cabal has a round center board. Um, I did a game called Step Right Up, which is about a carnival. It's also a round up game. So that's a round board. Um, no one lives forever has a round board. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> so, a... Uh, and yeah, even some of my older games I use. I like circles. I went to <laughs> architecture school, and I was always working circles into <laughs> my, my designs as well. So it's just something in my brain. Oh, and and I, I and this leads into my next question. Like perfect, oh, okay. because uh, you were, you also told us that you are a huge fan of my Gertz, and he yeah. is known oh, for yeah. his rondelles. Like so, rondelles, right? yeah. <laughs> so and, uh, and the question related to this is, are you very happy to join him next year at the Spiel Messe? I, and I am <laughs> He's one of my favorite designers. Uh, 
to be able to meet him is going to be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, be, we can do that next year. Yeah, I <laughs> with, hope so. With I was going to come to this year. I know. That was my I know. Plan for the first time, and then of course it didn't. It, happen, it didn't but, couldn't uh, happen. I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, I've been working on. I've been trying to get his older games. Uh, mm. Like I picked up Hamburgum last year. I just recently got uh, Machu Picchu. <laughs> um, looking forward to Transatlantic too. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be super okay. exciting. Okay. So um, yeah, and uh, well, perhaps I I have one uh, one question I d I didn't write down. So. Um, which came from the interview with Matt um, is mm -hmm. so he's designing his historical games um, yeah. most of the time. So your games are also have sometimes a bit of it in it. But um, yeah. how how are you and yeah? What's your um, so where where does a thematic inspiration come from perhaps, or do you see yourself doing something historic or not or? It just kind of so really recently historic. happened. It's, it wasn't something I intended to do. Mm. Um, I think there are some cool periods in history that there's there are things to pull from. I got on this weird like death kick for a while, so a couple of my games are just <laughs> like, how can I make this work within this idea? Oh, if I set it in kind of an historical setting, it really works. Mm. The London Necropolis Railway, which is one that um, I'm still working on getting out, um, it's, it's very rooted. It's very much a historical game. It's about a real train line. Um, mm. 1890s uh, in London, so that was completely theme first. Somebody okay. had told me about it as a joke. It was like, okay. oh, it's the next game in your death series. <laughs> I was like, oh, actually, that I could yeah. make a cool game out of that. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily something I'm going to be doing going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there's, I mean, there's a lot to be pulled from history. A lot of uh, cool ideas mm -hmm. that lend themselves to games. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of happened with these. With uh, these watch and. Than Necropolis, no one was forever, all kind of story. But I think that's really that's probably it. it. The other ones aren't so much. World West, I guess, kind of is set in the Gold Rush, but that's also mm. it's based on another game that already, mm. it, you know, it's kind of like a roll and write version of mm. a larger game that's already established. So something that's a little coincidental. And then if you 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 told told us now that you studied architecture, is there any yeah. architecture game on the way? I don't think <laughs> or so. Or is that not uh, I mean, linked? <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I think the one thing that architecture has done for me uh, in terms of game design is uh, architecture, and I went into uh, school for photography as well, is getting okay. used to getting critical feedback. Okay, and, yeah. And, and being okay with like creating something and putting it out and, and, and being okay with people being critical, right? Mm. And, and you, how to use that, that feedback. Uh, I also uh, worked as an architectural model maker, um, and I think that's helped my prototyping skills as well. Confidence to, to, to build things. something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think, in terms of uh, kind of inspiration for a game, I don't know if there's anything there. I think there have been some really good architecture themed games that have come out recently, so I don't really have to make them. Mm. <laughs> so, ah, okay, so yeah. that's also. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So that uh, those were my questions. Um, I thank you very much for for doing for making this possible. And um, yeah. yeah, we all look forward uh, on the release of Watch next year. And um, yeah, me so, too. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Good to see you. Thanks.